The prevention side obviously is, is exactly what your work is, is focused on. Um, you know, a trusted adult is listening right now and they're saying to themselves, wow, I, ha I can see some of those triggers. I can see some of um, these behaviors maybe mm -hmm. in, in, a, in their own child or a child they know. Um, what, what are the next steps then if they, they actually feel as if there could be abuse taking place um, with a child? Well, first of all, we also want to make sure our, it's not one of those that stand out alone, because mm. we don't want young parents to panic about yeah. bedwetting and thumb sucking. Absolutely. But, so we're looking at a combination of, okay. okay? But yes, now we look at that and we think, well, what am I supposed to do now? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we want to do is remain calm. Not an easy thing to do, Yes. okay? Mm -hmm. So if a child expresses that they've been sexually assaulted by, let's say, a family member or, or, or a close family friend, our reaction is going to make a big difference on whether or not that child is going to recant. Because yes. we're going to be feeling anger, sympathy, empathy. We might feel very upset for that child. We cannot show that. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to make sure that we are there for that child, we're actively listening to that child and letting them tell their story in their own words. 22% uh, of children actually will recant after they disclose an abusive situation. So okay. we don't want that to happen. So in order for that not to happen, we need to believe what the child's telling us. Okay. Um, mandated reporters in the state of New Jersey, 18 and older, if we suspect, we, we report, but it's not up to us to determine whether or not that child is lying. Okay. We have to look at ourselves as the bridge between the child and the help that they need. Okay. So to determine that, we want to make sure that we're using their language. They're going to use the language of the perpetrator, which mm. might not be the language of the anatomy. So that's okay. why that needs to be taught at a very young age, such as their early childhood program. Yes. In a comfortable setting, obviously. Mm. Um, but we also want to make sure that uh, if we don't understand the language, to ask the language, which is that who, what, where, when. So okay. if a child is using the word private part, we want to understand, is it the genitals? We want to know that because it yeah. might not be in, in that child's perspective. Yes. Um, we also want to make sure that we validate that child. It's very difficult for them to tell that story. And if they're sharing that story with one person, they're going to have to tell other people as well. Yeah. So we need to validate them. Okay. I'm really glad you told me that must have been very difficult for you. We also want to let them know the action that's going to take place. Okay. In order for me to help you, I'm going to need to tell somebody else. Okay. Today, tomorrow might be a different day. Somebody might want to come and talk to you about this. We want them to use their inner strength, mm -hmm. just like we taught in the workshop. Use your inner strength um, and be able to share that story. We don't want to make promises we can't keep. We can't say this will never happen to you because we don't know that. We can just trust and, fit and, and have faith in the system that, that the child um, will feel enough um, empowerment to be able to share that story and, and get that trusted adult to even help them with this. So we want to let them know you have the right to be safe. You have the right to be able to share this. But more importantly, a child needs to hear from anybody that what has happened to them is not their fault. We've had many adult survivors that have told us, you know, if I had one person to believe me, my yeah. life would be different. Mm -hmm. I've had in our staff and parent workshops and af directly after a classroom workshop, I've had many adults disclose sexual abuse, physical abuse in their lifetime that they've never told anybody, that I was the first person that yeah. they have told. Mm -hmm very difficult for people but this is what makes people become survivors and not remain victims yeah absolutely. and 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 we even in our adult workshops focus on the ACE study okay. adverse childhood experience yeah. um, this is something that's coming to the forefront with communities uh, you know I know in Atlantic and Cape May it's absolutely. hot topic now yes it is but we've had over 17,000 HMOs do research research and found that children who have been abused or maltreated can have um, later on in life illnesses as well as suffer from early death. We don't want this for our children. So, you know, we came to New Jersey in 1984 with this information. Wow. So we're, we're working on 36 years yeah, now. Yeah. And it, it was originated from Columbus, Ohio in 1978. So okay. we've already been at that prevention end. And this is what we want. And this is why we start as young as early childhood.